As a young girl in the early 20th century, Jane Evans was raised by her father and, as a result, grew up with goals and skills unique for women of the times. She played more with tools than dolls and eventually studied medicine, math, music, aeronautics, architecture, art, and was a skilled equestrian. Jane Evans could have done just about anything. As the decorating director for a department store in St. Louis, her life path seemed destined for anything but world jewelry. But like so often happens, fate would intervene and help redefine the very history of women in Reform Judaism forever. When I am asked about becoming involved in Jewish life, I do have to confess that uh, I had a different career in mind. I was in the field of art and I was teaching. Unbeknown to me, one of my students was the then president of the National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods. And uh, when a vacancy occurred in the directorship, she invited me to become the director of the National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods on a temporary basis, but the temporary basis became a life. Jane didn't just step into her new position, she transformed it, becoming the first full-time director of what was then the National Federation of Temple Sisterhoods in 1933, a position she would hold for the next 43 years. From women's rights, to civil rights, to labor law, to her advocacy for the ordination of women rabbis, Jane Evans' pursuit of justice and equality was relentless. I thought that both congregations, education, and the entire breadth of the rabbinic responsibilities would be enormously enhanced by women as well as men being our teachers. From the evolution of the Jewish Braille Institute to the creation of NIFTI, from promoting resolutions protesting child labor to pioneering Judaica shops in our synagogues to promoting access to birth control. From the World Union for Progressive Judaism to resettling Holocaust survivors to the creation of the United Nations to the Union's move from Cincinnati to New York, Jane Evans' counsel, her impact her footprint knew no boundaries. And as a result, neither did the women of NFTS or of today's WRJ. She was promoting youth engagement and social justice long before it was fashionable or popular. And generations of reformed Jewish women have followed her lead. At 20 years old, Jane designed a fan blade called the Silver Swan that was adapted for motorboat engines, a design that is still the industry standard today. At 80, she learned Hebrew, and at 94, she was still piloting her boat. She was anything but typical. She was a visionary who still serves as an inspiration for women to think independently and to think out loud. Sisters laugh and sisters cry. Sisters stand strong by and by. Sister, oh my sister. If you ever wonder what's on the horizon for Reform Judaism, you would do well to take a look at the women of Reform Judaism. The women of Reform Judaism were honored at the 2013 Biennial in San Diego with the reform movement's highest recognition as they celebrated their centennial year. And while watching these proud Jewish women celebrating together, you just couldn't help but think that ultimately, this was Jane Evans' legacy. All I can say is I am convinced that reform Judaism will continue to expand 
It is the Judaism, not just of the current or the past, but very definitively of the future.